Okay, looks like we are getting ready and we have our participants are starting to join in. So thank you all for joining us today uh, for the issue and awareness ties connecting through content in today's digital world webinar. Um, as folks are starting to join in the call, we'll give a few minutes to make sure that everyone's able to join. And thank you again for having the chance to uh, join us as we've rescheduled uh, today's uh, webinar to be today. So um, while everybody is starting to join in, I am going to just launch a couple kickoff questions and polls. Uh, so should see a quick poll just to see where everyone is joining us um, from today. And we'll be running that for a couple minutes while everybody continues to file in. Um, and then we'll have a couple other questions as well. I see lots of hellos from our uh, webinar chat piece as well. So hi from all over the world. And yes, this uh, this meeting is being recorded. So today's webinar will be recorded and uh, shared afterwards as well. Let's see. So I'll give just a little bit more time to answer the poll just to get an idea of where everyone's joining from. And then uh, we have one other question and we can start the webinar. Awesome. Wow, from all over the world. I know. Nice. So exciting to see. <laughs> Bonjour, Paris. Okay, let's see. And now, one more question on the poll as we get started. Um, so, as you guys have time, please answer uh, poll number two, which I am launching now, just to get an idea of uh, who in the audience is issue subscription users and what um, what subscription you guys have. Um, so again, today's uh, webinar is connecting content, connecting through content in today's digital world with uh, issue and awareness ties. So my name is Megan Cole. I'm a marketing manager over at Issue, and uh, joining us today, we're really excited to have Ali McGuire, one of the co-founders and owners of Awareness Ties. Hello. Um, Yes, thank you so much, Ali, for joining us and for joining us for this rescheduled day as we are still uh, sheltering in place over here in Chicago, uh, where I'm located. And um, have you been staying safe and well? Uh, yes, um, and uh, yeah, busy. Um, again, I, like everyone, just adjusting to this new norm and with six children, that takes some doing. So we've been busy. Yeah. yeah, so six children. I I have two roommates, and I literally am like, this is a lot. <laughs> so I can only imagine. Um, we'd love to hear more about awareness ties, so everyone in the audience can get to know uh, the awesome organization and work that you guys are doing. Right. Well, um, so thank you. Thank you first and foremost just for the invitation to this conversation. Um, awareness ties. We are the official symbol of support for causes. Uh, what we're doing is we're trying to change the way uh, support for causes is raised and sustained. And so we do that in a couple of different ways. Um, you know, certainly our mission, as it states here, it's um, to support positive social change by raising awareness for causes and funds for nonprofit organizations. So how do we do that? We begin with awareness we begin with using content to, um, to explain to people these issues that they think they know or that they don't know, to help them find ways to connect and to create positive social change. Um, so this is aligned with our vision, um, again, as it states here, for this global movement to elevate awareness for causes and um, to create these sustainable resources. So, 
all that said, uh, we've got a tie. Looks like this. You say awareness ties. What's what's up with the ties? The ties, you know, yes, you can use it as like a fashion statement. We decided to use the tie instead as a symbol of support. Everyone's very familiar with awareness ribbons that are worn. You see a pink ribbon, you know it's breast cancer. Okay, great. So they're showing support for breast cancer. What we thought we would do is um, because there's more than one cause and for each cause, more than one color to represent them, we decided to come up with a line of ties. These are our symbols of support. These are statements to help people show their support and awareness for these different causes. Um, in addition to just this physical tie, awareness ties, we're about more than just this. We're about the ties that we all have. We're all tied to a cause. Most of us are tied to many different causes. And so awareness ties is not only about a symbol of support, but it's actual support through awareness. And so to create that awareness, we have partnered with Issue to do some incredible things. One of which is to have our awareness guides uh, for content. And the other is our magazine, our online magazine. Um, and that's where the conversation um, really happens and really begins. Mm -hmm. So we're a fundraising platform and we're also um, an awareness platform. So that's a snapshot thought. <laughs> yeah, there's truly so much more to awareness ties. We could just talk on this slide all day, but the work that uh, you all have been doing is really inspiring and stuff that we're super excited to be able to support on, especially when it comes to that discussion point of having a global movement now on the digital space. It's a really awesome opportunity to learn and grow, um, especially, whoops, with um, issue uh, so over on the issue side, our philosophy is really about giving users around the world the ability to upload and distribute contents in a variety of really engaging formats. Um, so we are able to take any PDF content and create flip books so that you can embed on your website, as well as vertical video content or visual stories for social scrollable mobile reading um, content and a lot of other different optimized ways to create and share content, both to raise awareness, share or spread information, or even just um, bring a little bit of brightness into some people's days. So it's really kind of our goal to help companies and brands with external and internal communications to create a lot of digital brand um, presence that helps align your employees, customers, and more with that messaging um, to get your message across, especially on the digital landscape. Um, so diving a bit deeper into Awareness Ties and our partnership with Awareness Ties, um, we'd love to hear kind of why you chose Issue and which ways you um, like to utilize Issue for your own goals. Yeah, so this is an interesting conversation. You know, first of all, why Issue? Um, it's the difference between consuming content and experiencing content. So. <laughs> As I see it, PDFs are meant for consuming stories. With issue, it's more about experiencing stories. So I like to think in terms of poetry. Um, I started out my career as a performance poet. So um, I just want to explain it this way. Um, a PDF is written poetry. So I don't know if you can see this or not. This is a poem. Oh, the lighting is not good. Um, that's written. You might not be able to see the words there. So this is one expression of this poem. Now, there's another expression. This is a PDF, okay? With issue, we're not looking at written poetry. We're looking at performance poetry. So same content, just expressed in a different way. So this poem is entitled Satisfaction. You can have this experience, or you can have this experience. I can't get no time to find myself. So potential sits in a jar on a high shelf that I can't reach as you preach what I should and should not do. But who are you to keep me reined, restrained? And I can't get no space, no place to spread my wings as the choir sings. I can't get no air to breathe. Can you conceive such a notion, such an emotion so intense it paralyzes? 
or hiding behind disguises of Zanis of action. So I say this this way, I give this verbose example because it's the same content, but it is either just strictly consumed with text or it's experienced like I just did. So for me, issue is performance poetry. It allows for that experience. So a visual experience, the visual stories that issue provides, um, it increases the value of content. So to what I might argue to exponential degrees. Um, let's take an example. How about why our webinar is this week and not last week? We can start with that very good example, right? So in the rawest form of a visual story, we see a very recent example. They had the power to change the world. A particular nine minutes of a visual story that went viral, capturing George Floyd's tragic end. So stories have the power to change the world. And so it's with this power, when it's harnessed properly, that allows us to connect. It allows us to learn, it allows us to change. That long story short is why we work with issue. <laughs> That's a really beautiful sentiment and thank you for sharing. We're <laughs> glad we were able to help provide any services and um, create poetry with our customers. Um, I'd love to hear more as well about kind of the, the annual guides in the monthly magazine, especially with the Hero Edition out. Um, yeah. Kind of what the current methods you use for those content communications. And if, if there's any um, publication you'd like to dive into, happy to share, do some page flips. All um, right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, again, I have this metaphorical mind, so I'll just keep going with that. Um, so the way that we communicate, the way we use issue to do that with our content, imagine you're walking into a library. We would either direct you, the Awareness Ties Library. I like to say library, because that's much more fun than library. Awareness Ties Library. You come in, we're going to direct you either to the reference section or to the periodical section. In the reference section, you would find our awareness guides. These awareness guides are resources for the information on the 21 causes that we currently represent. Each one of these contains a definition of the cause, facts, statistics, along with lists of where to get help um, and where to give help. Um, with the issue platform, we are able to make updates as needed with new stats that come in, um, with available resources. Um, so that's the guides. The guides, again, are meant to be, think of them in terms of like an encyclopedia, right? You go there as a resource um, there. Now, if you were to not go to the resource section, if you were go, going to the periodical section, that is where you would find Aware Now. And that's our online magazine. And this began in January. This is our monthly publication. And um, it incl includes exclusive interviews, personal stories, interactive videos. This is where the conversation begins. So we have our um, guides as being more static in nature. And then we have our magazine that's more dynamic. And that allows us to keep current with things that are evolving and changing and growing constantly. Yeah, absolutely. And there's I think it's a really great, and we're always so excited to see the ways that you use issue and, and how it can be uh, optimized and used, especially with the benefit of that like digital side to it. So when it comes to being able to share more engaging content, like video content, or being able to update your content, like you were saying, correcting any typos or even linking out to more relevant information um, is just a really awesome feature, in my opinion. Um, to get information more accessible to um, more people and get it on more more people's radars. Um, right. Especially compared to, say, uh, I think we, we had discussed about this earlier, um, print editions where you, if you have a correction, you have to reprint everything or send out kind of those correction mm -hmm. corners to, mm -hmm. to re-inform people versus being able to kind of instantly 
make those changes as you need to see yes. uh, see them out. I feel, and you know what, I feel like I should be writing a thank you note every, to my <laughs> every single time I have to make one of these because uh, although I'd run out of ink and paper and I'd be in debt with the amount of postage, um, but so I was thinking about this this morning actually and um, to err is human, to forgive is divine. And we all know this, we've heard this saying. Um, for this reason, I believe that issue just might be divine, like it might be a divine platform. <laughs> um, because issue is so forgiving. And especially in those days and times where everything is so turbulent and changing and there's so much content to consume and to share, um, things are moving so quickly. So proofreading is good as you do it, it's never really always right, at least for me. So I have to say thank you to Issue for being forgiving because tattoos are not. <laughs> tattoos are not. And I, I say this because I have this tattoo on my finger. Um, so this is like opposite of, of Issue. I thought it would be cute back in the day to get this mustache tattoo because if you're arguing with your significant other and you say no to something, you can say no like that. And it sounds, it's more funny. Like how could they be mad at you? So, unlike tattoos, issues super, super forgiving. Um, you know, it's everything from the little things that are actually quite big things from an esque where, you know, Johns Hopkins, not John Hopkins. Damn you, spell check. What? <laughs> what? So, to be able to make that correction and still uphold the integrity of your brand and your content. Um, it's it's everything and so if you are working with content in a platform that does not allow for that sort of flexibility mm -hmm. um you're doing a huge disservice to yourself um yeah i just i can't say thank you enough thank you megan and all <laughs> of you uh i cannot take pretty much any of the credit but <laughs> uh on behalf of issue we welcome you for sure um <laughs> We definitely, I think another piece that's really important and valuable is making the accessibility of the product um, strong and easy to use and um, use quickly, especially when having to upload your content or make, uh, make any changes or anything like that. So uh, are there any kind of with the format and the um, platform, are there any like tips and tricks or ways that you've been using the platform to really optimize your own um, outreach? Yeah, for sure. I mean, certainly. And we saw this with the Hero Edition because it is a very like 96 pages, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so it's quite long. And so to be able to reference a specific page in the publication, to be able to provide a direct link which issue allows you to do, as opposed to, hey, take a look, it's found in there, take a look, you'll find it eventually. You don't have mm -hmm. to say that. You can say, hey, here's the direct link to this page or to that page, to this hero or that hero. Um, so that helps with sharing. That helps for directing people so people don't feel like they're lost. And while the content's all beautiful and gorgeous and lovely, there's one thing specific that that person was looking for. And as we all know, we all have this much time available at any given <laughs> time, right? Yeah. So to be able to respect your user, right? Um, this allows you to facilitate and um, it just helps to streamline the experience and to keep the experience cohesive. Mm -hmm. so, um, that's one for sure. The other thing is, you know, just the flipping through the pages, being able to have that experience. I love books. I love the smell of them. I like the, you know, the way they look when they're sitting nicely arranged as I'm very OCD on my coffee table. I like that. Um, I like that you can flip through. While this is not the same experience, it is an experience, just that flipping. Um, there's something to it that adds to the experience of, of the content. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that kind of tactile experience of being able to flip books even when you're staring into computers is, I think, especially nice uh, during these very unprecedented times, to say the least. Um, right, right. Well, and then, I'll, I mean, another thing that I might add to, you know, the, the platform itself and the experience that it provides is um, 
again, just being able to, what's huge for us and what we've really utilized is video. So being able to, again, it's one thing to provide your content in text, but when you can provide something that they can like see and hear, awesome. So to be able to embed video content um, is huge to be able to be able to click on something to say, hey, you want to get involved? There's nothing better than as a consumer of content, as an experiencer of content, being able to say, oh, that's amazing. I want to know more about that girl. I want to know more about that guy. To be able to click and go and have direct access. Again, we're not patient people. I'm not. It's not a virtue <laughs> I've ever had and probably never will. So being able to take that direct action, um, Number one, again, that for your user, it's so much more satisfying. Um, and then also, as a, a, a business, um, as a corporate entity, like being able to not lose them in translation of things, being able to wrap them to an actionable item, to have actionable items like within your content is everything, especially now in, in these digital days. So huge wins everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Cannot agree more. <laughs> Something I think we've all been thinking about more and more um, over the last few months on what more we can be doing um, and how more we can be kind of sharing um, just across the board. It's, it's definitely a, a really interesting time to be <laughs> thinking about and coming up with new ways and new ideas. Yeah. Um, let's see. So do you have any thoughts on sort of the opportunities we have now in terms of creating and connecting with content, um, especially having gone through and created the Hero Edition, what, what advice would you give um, on how to amplify further for these opportunities on connecting? Um, I think it's about creating that base level of content, right? And then from there, pulling, um, pulling the smaller, I like to say the snackable content, you know, so if you've prepared this whole feast, you know, um, well, for heaven's sake, look at what Costco does or did, you know, with having like all of their fabulous foods there. And then they give you these little tastes, these little snacks. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, it's amazing. So I think what with issue providing visual stories, being able to provide a visual story um, mm -hmm. that represents the content of, of your material, that's a huge win. Um, being able to call out um, pieces of, of content from the whole body of work. Um, so just sort of, not to say it, like setting the hook, but you know, um, <laughs> again, there's a flood of content out there and what's going to make someone stop as this, they're being flooded, what's going to make them stop and say, wow, now that's something interesting. Now, the, I mean, you can't, because you might have the most incredible message to share but again if you're in the woods and a tree falls and no one's there does is it heard does it make a sound i don't know so to be heard i think you really have to find ways to first of all you have to have the content and then to be able to um provide connections to it and we do that with the visual story we do that with the um links to the specific content that lives right. within the publication. Um, it's using all of these tools that are at your hands um, that we're just not aware of that's, that can really make all the difference. Yes, and uh, I, I knew I was forgetting something when I was setting up this webinar. We've been chatting a lot about the value of visual stories um, mm -hmm. and I have a quick example of that, but it's not with the awareness ties content. So, so, um, instead, I have some equally interesting content on esports to kind of give a little bit of context for um, our viewers on what exactly visual stories does. Mm -hmm. uh, so with visual stories in particular, and as well as our uh, article optimization, we're able to take any of the content from uploaded pieces and create vid video content. So essentially what we do is we are able to detect all of the images and the text from the original piece and provided my internet will allow me, it's been pretty slow over the last few days, um, it'll automatically pull those assets and create video content from your examples. So um, 
just we have a lot more content and information on our um, on our YouTube channels as well as in our help center if uh, folks are curious more to to see more information but just to give a little bit of context around the tool that is the visual stories tool uh, we're able to really easily recreate your content that you already have and and utilize it in other ways to help with those promotions and outreach pieces um, so here you can see kind of one of our video examples you can also really easily change the images out or the text out and it also detects all of the text and indexes it as well to help with your search capabilities. So uh, when we talk about visual stories and the values of it, it's not only for that desktop reading experience, but also to help reach out on your social channels and your mobile optimized channels and all of those pieces as well. So another another kind of feature that we're really excited to be able to share with all of our creators um, and that Awareness Ties has been doing a really great job at Udicing, um for all of their magazines and um, guides. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So while we are chatting, we would love to hear any questions that folks have. I know uh, in the chat box, people have been um, sending some questions along. So uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, and we'll be we'll be opening up the uh, Q&A and, and responding now. And as those Q&As start to pull in, uh, I'm also going to just pull up one of the last poll questions. Do, do, do. So uh, that will be running as we get any questions. See. So uh, we have one question that asks, what is the learning curve? Is someone new to issue? How long did it take you to put out uh, such amazingly immersive content with gratitude from Carrie? Oh, well, <laughs> thank you, Carrie. Um, you know what, I, uh, we, we picked it up pretty quick, pretty easy. It's really intuitive. It's creating your concept, putting it out, and then from there, you're able to very easily make it immersive and intuitive. So um, the learning curve, it's, it's not high. Um, <laughs> unlike COVID and the curve situation there, this, it's a non-issue, I would say. <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's pretty easy. It didn't take me long to, to pick it up. And I mean, I've been using it for years, but when I first started into it, I like things that are easy access. Um, and, and this certainly was a tool since from day one that was super intuitive. And if there are questions to be asked, Issue's been inc an incredible partner for providing any answers to any questions. Um, yeah, easy peasy, lemon breezy. That would be my answer. Good to, good to know. Uh, let's see. So I uh, have a question from Jennifer asking sort of how does issue work on mobile and um, how many folks are accessing content on mobile. So I can speak that to that a bit as well. Um, so with our mobile optimization tools for the visual stories as well as the article side um, we created that tool to help with the mobile accessibility and readability on um, the digital platforms so um, kind of our, our general numbers that we've seen across issue is a really high percentage of, of readers are coming from mobile devices when you're sharing those stories out um, if you're sharing them on social a lot of the times they're going to be interacting from their mobile um, so we have a couple different ways that our links work in order to be really optimized for that experience as well so that also dives into our stories tools so um, here I'll pull up and I'm going to do a kind of force preview. Um, so here with the the article story, we have um, this really awesome TikTok doctor, Jason Campbell. Um, and when you share the story link, it'll share it as that page flip experience. But if I, and I'm going to just do, do force preview this a little bit into a phone. Um, we create 
it we've optimized it so it has that scrolling experience um, instead of having to do that kind of pinch in and pinch out on a page flip. So uh, that is that speaks a little bit to how our mobile optimized tools work. It helps with the readability and the shareability, as well as um, helping you with those kind of uh, sneak preview snippets and and um, other information that you can share. Let's see. Interested. Um, so. Kirsten says uh, they'd be interested in knowing how Awareness Ties repurposes their content from issue to social, et cetera. Yeah, and so for that, um, certainly um, there are a number of ways to do it. Um, we generally will take a particular image of a page and we will put it on social media and then we will link it to the magazine so people can go right to that experience. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's just like pulling those visuals, putting that on social media, and then providing the direct link back to the page so that people can see it that way. Um, also, certainly with visual stories and article stories, it makes it super intuitive and, and easy to do that. So it's just um, defining what topics we want to highlight and um, either using again, the visual stories, the uh, articles, or um, just grabbing an image uh, from the publication and linking directly to the, to the publication. Mm -hmm. um, Cheryl has a really interesting question. Um, do you have any tips to really connect instead of just throwing information at people? Yeah, I mean, I think um, that we connect not being talked to, but to being talked with. So I think it's to use content to create a conversation. Mm. Um, if you look at, uh, for example, the Hero Edition, that it's Jack is asking someone a question or it's Allie asking someone a question. And so there's really this, the way it's formatted is as a conversation. So I guess that'd be my biggest advice is don't talk at people, talk with people because it's social media. It's meant to be social. So anytime right. you can position the content as if, you were, imagine a person is standing right in front of you. What would you say to them? Would you say, 1908, blah, 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 blah. No, you would not. No, you would not. No. <laughs> so um, make it a conversation. That would be my advice. Let's see. Got lots of questions, which is awesome to see. <laughs> Yay. Let's see. Um, so, uh, someone asks, what are some ways product companies that don't have magazine-like products can use Issue? Um, and I think Issue is a really, what's really nice about Issue, while we are kind of featuring the guides and magazine content from Awareness Ties, what's nice is you can really upload any content you want onto our platform. Um, so we have some examples available on uh, issue.com slash issue where we have a lot of different case studies, including how um, some companies use it as an HR tool to get their newsletters out there or to share other um, information. People with uh, any catalog products also use issue a lot for catalog sales. Um, but really, if you have any content, even if it's just a Word document, you can very easily upload it to issue and, and find ways to create other content off of those. Um, uploads. So hope that answers your question a bit and um, definitely check out some examples on our issue, uh, official issue page on issue. I said issue so many times now. I hope, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that uh, the information can be found. Uh, you know, um, another, another thing about that though, Megan, about like a product company, um, since the biggest, the most valuable kind of content right now is user generated content, um, another thing for a product company might be with any testimonials or feedback, you're getting some good reviews somewhere, like why not make a publication that's just about that and say, why is so-and-so amazing? Don't take our word for it. I mean, you can go a bit reading rainbow on that, you know, um, don't take our word for it, check it out yourself. But then to feature the person, like even invite them, the, the reviewer, like, hey, reviewer, right. thank you. Can we share that? Do you want to be featured in this? To have, how cool would that be? Like to have their picture and their quote, and are they going to share it? Well, hell yes, they will share it, you know? So 
there's so many ways that product companies can do amazing things. So I love wow. you and you, Megan, I have to say. <laughs> Allie's here just to also become a consultant for everyone on this call to, <laughs> to, to help come with um, other ideas. Um, another question someone asked is, let's see, um, if there was a question on what tools you use to create the content um, before you've uploaded it. So uh, we have kind of an InDesign extension and tools, but, um, and I mentioned before we, uh, Microsoft Word, you can upload Word documents or anything, but um, any tips on the design side or how you produce the content as well? Well, you're diving into my secret sauce a little bit now. <laughs> but that is sauce I'm willing to share. Um, you know, and so there are, there's a bajillion different platforms, uh, tools to be able to create a PDF. You can even do it on Google Docs. Um, what I like to use, and yes, I'm a huge fan of Adobe and super savvy all day long living and breathing Photoshop and Illustrator, but for these publications, ready for secret sauce, Keynote. Keynote. Not, I'm not a huge PowerPoint fan, but Keynote, since I'm kind of an Apple girl, I, I do love Keynote. And so what I do is I create a presentation, which is cool. You can create it any format you want. Um, and then I save it as a PDF. And then from there, upload. Um, I like it because it's um, very intuitive and easy to drag and drop content into it. And um, you need to make a change. It's super simple and easy and doesn't take five days to render. So, you know, um, you know, secret I sauce, there you go. That. I might steal that tip from you for some <laughs> of my future presentations and projects. Rock it. It's lovely. And another secret is later down the line, Issue might have some, some tools that can help with your production as well. But don't tell anyone, please. Or do. <laughs> um, Let's see. Last couple of questions. Let me just see. So, um, Lindsay asks, uh, do you have the magazines live on your website or are there single articles that link back to the full magazine? Yes. And so, yes, good question. So we do have, um, if you go to awarenessties.com, a couple of things. You can go under movement and then you can click on guides there you will see our whole library of guides. Actually, yeah, let's do that first. Oh, it's awarenessties.us. Okay. Oops. So over to the guides. Yep. And so you See here, we have all of the guides and our lovely ambassadors who are featured on the covers. So for example, if you click on, oh, we click on Della, heart disease. <laughs> we just onboarded her, she's amazing. Um, so there's our guide there. So as you see, we have it on the website where we have just the image uh, so we can control it, how it's displayed, whether it's mobile or desktop. You click there and then it takes it to the full screen version. So we just use the full screen link an issue, it links directly there. So awesome. that's an easy way to do that. And the same thing with the magazine, um, you know, you go to, uh, if you go to movement, you hover over movement, and then you go to magazine, um, then that's where we have an ongoing list of, so we have the, both the embedded version there, mm -hmm. And then um, so people can experience, because we want to keep them on site, right? We want to keep, right. we never want to have our audience go too far away from us, you know. We'll give them like a little bit of a tether that they can go out on and, and whatnot, but we want to keep them here. So embedding the content is hugely important. Um, now what we do, um, just here's another little tips, tricks for you to, to think on, is um, we have code in here where if you're looking at this publication, um, on a desktop, there's code there for that. If you're looking at it, uh, at it on a mobile device, you will see something different. So we use two different um, embed codes. Mm -hmm. um, we have the embed code for the double page experience like you're experiencing here. And then 
issue also has embed code for if you want just one page at a time. You don't want the flip experience, rather you just want the one because that can render rather small and mobile. Mm -hmm. So it's really diving into all the embedding options that issue has because there's a ton. Um, and the same thing with the full screen experience. So it's looking at all those settings. I would invite everyone who has any publication with issue to go through and just play, like have some fun, like what can I do with this? What new experience can I provide? And then in doing so, you're going to provide a richer experience for everyone. <laughs> yeah, these are, this is awesome. Two examples of, of the different ways you can share the content as well, especially directly from your own websites. Um, I always get excited when there are great examples of the embedded um, <laughs> reader use. I'm like, oh, another one that I can pull up for, for some uh, use cases and case studies to show some awesome examples. Oh yeah, we've got that for days. So anytime you need it. Let's see. Um, just I, can I, I, I see someone, um, Jean-Pierre, saying he'd like to know how many people are working full-time for Awareness Ties. You're <laughs> looking at one of them. There's two of us. There's my husband, Jack, who's incredible and amazing and with our children right now, as I speak. Um, and so there's two of us working full-time. So that's the answer. That a two-person team being able to do so much and accomplish so much is, is um, to say you're busy is an understatement for sure. You know, I actually started crying the other night. I was looking at everything at like pretty tears because it was like, it wasn't like ugly cry. It was like pretty cry. It was like a proud cry. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all this content and all of this. They're like my babies, all these mm -hmm. causes. It's like I have 21 more children, you know, and um, all of these guides and all these magazines um, to know that two people to create something like this um certainly adds a lot of work on our end but again to have the right tools makes all the difference for us to translate you know yeah absolutely um let's see i think that let's see wraps up most of the questions sorry just reading let's see i'm gonna take um, so one last question from Chloe. How long did it take you to create and publish your 90 page magazine with the hero edition? Oh. Uh, let's see to create and that was the creation was an ongoing process because um, it wasn't that we just said, oh, we have all this content. It was collecting all of the content from all the different. It's one thing if you have one source to go to but we had you know, 19 different sources to pull from. So that took some time, but to create it with Keynote um, and then to upload it, I wanna say that it was like a solid week or two, like two weeks that it was just going back and forth with the edits and additions right. and all of those. Um, it took some time, but once we had it all together, we're talking, it took, maybe 17 minutes <laughs> to get it all uploaded onto issue the way we wanted it and putting everything together and I mean the upload time is like two minutes less than that so <laughs> yeah the creation took some time the curation and creation yeah well with the cre with the curation this was um the hero edition especially was a, a call to to find and and identify those heroes uh, through right. nominations right Right. Okay. So it was quite, it was quite a process. Um, but yeah, well, and again, this speaks to like, yay for divine issue with forgiveness, because I cannot tell you how many times each one of these heroes was just like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh, but could you, I was like, oh yes, oh yes, I can make that real time edit. Like, thank goodness. Cause when you have 19 stories that you want to make sure you get it right, mm -hmm. really right. Especially with something like this, where we're acknowledging them as a hero. It's important that, um, again, you have that leeway. And, um, but again, when changes were made, they were made and it was instant, so. Yeah. And one last question from Pat. Is this magazine free or is there a charge? It is free, free. Yep, yes. it is totally free, so you may. So the it. Awareness Ties can be found on awarenessties.us 
and you can you can read um, all of their guides as well as their full magazines um, straight onto their website or you can find them on issue.com slash awareness ties. Um, if you are interested in in selling um, any content on issue, we do have digital sales as well. Um, where you can sell magazine content or even um, use it as a fundraising tool. There are some some cool digital sales side of things that you can do, but Awareness Ties has kindly shared their magazines and uh, guides for free on their websites and on issue. Right. Um, can I say one more thing before we... Of course. Okay. Um, so one thing, and this again is speaking to, um, you know, people are asking, so it's COVID-19, what, what do we do now? And so when you're looking at ways to find COVID proof, ways to connect and to stay connected, I mean, again, I know there's a lot of nonprofit organizations, especially like, what do we do? We can't have our events, we can't have our things. Um, that digital content does give us the opportunity um, to still maintain connectivity. Um, and so one thing that I wanted to invite people to do is, um, we have a campaign we're going to be launching called Selfie to Support, and you can go to selfie to support.com. You can also find it on our website. We feature it in our magazine. Um, we're going to be featuring it more and more in our issue publications. An opportunity to be part of the story. So it's selfie to support.com. It's on our website, and it gives people the opportunity to share their selfie and their story to support a cause. And it's really been a beautiful project so far that we're going to be um, featuring and officially unveiling in the next coming week here. Um, and you'll see it in our issue publications, um, both in our guides and in our um, publications. So again, it's just an invitation for everyone to be part of these stories that we're telling. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're really excited to see what's next and to we'll um, check out and I'll send a selfie. <laughs> oh, yes. One selfie to support. Awesome. Um, so thank you all again for joining. My web pages have officially crashed, so I'm not even sure. <laughs> Zoom, I think, is continuing to work, um, but my, my presentation has crashed. Um, so again, this meeting has been recorded, so we'll share it back out with everyone. And if you're looking for any more information, um, check out issue.com slash features for more information about features on issue. And be sure to uh, visit Awareness Ties at awarenessties.us. Uh, thank you guys all again for joining and hope everyone is uh, staying safe and getting the information they can online. So. Thank you, Thank Megan. You. Amazing. Thank you so much, Allie. Have a good one. You too. Thanks, everyone.